My name is Rajesh Sesdev. I'd like to share a case of uh, multivessel coronary artery disease uh, where I used uh, functional assessment to make decisions. Patient is a 69 year old uh, man with history of coronary artery disease who was admitted with a diagnosis of unstable angina. Uh, the chest pain was of one day duration. He had total of four episodes of uh, chest pain. The chest pain was graded at 8 over 10. It was pressure-like. He had a troponin performed, uh, which were negative times 2. He also has past medical history of uh, CVA with no residual deficit, hypertension, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. He quit smoking about 20 years ago and drinks occasionally. Uh, he underwent echocardiogram, which showed left ventricular hypertrophy with ejection fraction of 65%. His medications included aspirin, resuvastatin, omeprazole, nifedipine et cell, lisinopril, isosorbide, dinitrate, uh, hydrochlorothiazide, and trimetrine, clopidogrel, and atinolol. In the hospital, he underwent uh, coronary angiography. Coronary angiography showed normal left main artery. Uh, circumflex artery had a 40% uh, stenosis in the proximal segment involving the bifurcation of the obtuse marginal one branch. The obtuse marginal one artery had about 60% stenosis. Uh, distal circumflex artery had diffuse uh, severe atherosclerosis leading to obtuse marginal two. Uh, the obtuse marginal two branch was uh, really a very small caliber artery. So left anterior descending artery had diffuse mild atherosclerosis in the proximal segment. I called it in the range of 40 to 50 percent. There are two diagonal branches uh, which uh, are very small caliber. Diagonal 2 branch had about 99 percent stenosis at the ostium. The mid distal uh, left anterior descending artery had about, about 50 percent instant free stenosis involving the bifurcation uh, of D3 branch. Uh, D3 ostium had about 50% stenosis. Right coronary artery had about 20% uh, instant uh, free stenosis in the mid segment and a diffuse mild atherosclerosis in the degree of uh, 40 to 50 percent in the distal segment. So the syntax score by angiography is 25 and the cumulative event rate at uh, two years of follow-up with uh, stenting would be 32 percent versus 22 percent in the cabbage arm. So the question is what would you do now? Uh, number one is uh, would you send the patient to surgery or would you perform three vessel angioplasty? Or number three is would you rather evaluate the functional significance of each lesion to determine if surgery or PCI is the best option for the patient. I chose the third option. I started with right coronary artery. Um, I took the pressure wire and I guided the pressure wire and parked it in the posterior descending artery. Then um, I started the IV adenosine and the FFR which was recorded was 0.88 which is not significant. So at this point the right coronary artery stenosis is hemodynamically insignificant and does not need intervention. Uh, then left coronary artery was intubated uh, the same pressure wire was used and now this pressure wire was uh, guided towards the obtuse marginal one branch and I popped it in the uh, distal 
part of the obtuse margin or one branch. Uh, again, IV adenosine was started, and the FFR recorded was 0.85. Uh, this FFR is again insignificant, so the result is the the stenosis which is present in the proximal circumflex as well as in the proximal segment of the obtuse marginal one branch is hemodynamically insignificant. Finally, I uh, took the same pressure wire and redirected that pressure wire into the left anterior descending artery. This pressure wire with the pressure sensor was propped in the distal segment of the left anterior descending artery. Again, IV adenosine was started at this point and FFR recorded was 0 0.78 which is in the ischemic range. At this point, a, a pullback was performed and that determined the stenosis that is responsible for ischemic FFR was the focal instant stenosis. Now at this point I'm now dealing with only one stenosis which is in the LAD which is focal however it is bifurcational involving the D3 osteum. The other two stenosis, one in the circumflex obtuse marginal and the second in the uh, right coronary artery, are hemodynamically insignificant. They do not need a coronary intervention. So the functional syntax score is 8. So at this point, uh, uh, the plan was to perform uh, PCI to the LED. Uh, the thing which was in my mind at this point was, uh, should I just need to go and perform a simple one stent technique versus uh, commit myself to a, a more complex technique at this point. Uh, I chose to perform a simple technique uh, with the stent implantation of on this uh, pressure wire which was already across the stenosis. A drug looting uh, 2.5 by uh, 12 millimeter stent was deployed in the uh, LAD uh, across that focal stenosis um, and across the diagonal 3 branch. At this point you, uh, you can see the diagonal 3 branch is pinched. The question here is would you do anything further to the diagonal 3 osteum? So uh, based on the previous angiogram uh, would you uh, cross and stent the uh, diagonal 3 osteum or would you just balloon uh, the diagonal osteum or would you leave it alone? Uh, I chose to cross the uh, diagonal artery with the same pressure wire which was in the LAD and uh, perform another um, FFR on diagonal 3 artery to find out what is the hemodynamic significance of this so-called severe osteal stenosis. After the IV adenosine was started, the FFR was 0 0.83. This is clearly in the non-ischemic range. So at this point, since there was good flow in the diagonal 3 artery, patient did not have any ischemic symptoms, no chest pain, I was quite comfortable in leaving the diagonal 3 osteum alone. So as you can see the final angiogram after giving uh, intracoronary adenosine uh, shows that the stent is well de deployed in the uh, LAD, the diagonal branch is well preserved, um, there is however stenosis, uh, there is also some diffuse disease in the uh, distal LAD uh, but the FFR, final FFR 
uh, in the distal LED was non ischemic 0.89. So to conclude this case, functional assessment changed the strategy from a multi-vessel treatment to a single vessel disease. Further, functional assessment post-tint was helpful in differing the proximal LED stenosis. And lastly, complex bifurcation strategy was deferred based on the functional assessment of the diagnosed stenosis. And more importantly, this was done at the same time and the patient did not have to go to another department or brought to the catheterization lab second time. Thank you.